Hello and welcome to Get It Right. My name is Susan Mwangi. On today's episode, we're gonna be learning more about organic farming. And as we all know, organic farming constitutes of using natural remedies to add nutrients to the soil. And one of the process that is involved in that is composting. And today at Ololo Farm, we have Kevin who will be helping us understand more about composting. So Lolo Farm is uh, an organic farm. We are 100% certified organic. We achieved our certification last year in 2020. And uh, what we are trying to do on farm is we are trying sustainable farming practices. These are practices where you care for the environment and as well as care for the people. So part of what we do is uh, we are trying to do uh, poultry farming which we're also doing organic, organic poultry farming, as well as uh, we're also growing crops in an organic system. Yeah, so all these we try and apply both organic and regenerative principles. By this I mean we care about the soil. The soil is the most important thing on a farm. So you have to ensure the soil is regenerated so it can still recover after you've You've, uh, the plants have grown, the animals have taken up the uh, plants and, and pasture. So still, uh, you still add nutrients to the soil to ensure there's consistent sea of production. What are some of the projects you have here at the farm? Some of the projects in include uh, new technology like using insects to produce manure and also chicken feed. Uh, for our poultry here and also manure for plants. So mainly this is called, the, the, the manure you get from the insect is called frass and this you get after about 12 days and is what you're using to grow uh, trees, to grow uh, strawberries on farm. And then you're also doing composting. So the normal hot composting where you just pile up uh, organic waste, then you you keep turning them every every week so they will take about two months to decompose and then you're also doing composting using earthworms to be specific red wrigglers so this help with uh, enhancing the biology in, in the composting system so yeah this takes a bit of time but it produces very uh, high nutritious cause all the biology has happened in there. We're growing uh, mushrooms, we're growing uh, other leafy greens and salads. So these are grown using the nutrients we are getting from the insects and also from the worms. Yeah, we're also practicing agroforestry. So you see we have uh, our cows, we have uh, chicken, we have uh, uh, the, the, the plants you see you, you see on farm, then we also, so we are trying to mix all this with trees, so just to make the system more sustainable. So what does it take for a farm to be 100% uh, certified organic? Organic basically means like the practices you're doing are environmental friendly. Yeah, yeah, taking care of the environment, the soils, that includes like you try and practice uh, rotational uh, crop growing and then you're also using organic um, fertilizers instead of synthetic inorganic fertilizers. Yeah, for livestock that will involve feeding your livestock on organic uh, nutrients, these are natural nutrients uh, like insects and uh, yeah, and also trying to you avoid uh, using GMOs and modifying your, your livestock. Our chicken, we're growing them on pasture. So uh, for the layers, we have a chicken mobile that we, we, would, we they are outside. So every morning we, we let them out they go out and pasture and in the evening around 4.30 we bring them back. So then we close them for the night to protect them from uh, uh, wild animals and yeah, to keep them safe. Yeah, but during the day they just move around and pasture and the mobiles, we move them every two days. 
so so that where they they stayed they help with the, uh, their poop is used as nutrient for the soil so they they stay the night they poop there so and then they feed on the grass so the next after two days we move then we have uh, we'll have the area left to regenerate so the grass will grow or the soil will have more nutrients yeah so same to the other uh, broilers and chicken for meat so we keep moving them every two days so they're on pasture they move every two days as they fertilize the soil and as they pasture on the on the grass So black soja fly is a topic that has been discussed a lot in the recent past where organic farming is concerned. Tell us more about this project. Yeah, on this uh, black soldier fly project, so this we are using insect, in short we call them BSF. So yeah, so this black soldier fly is, uh, is a new aggregate that has uh, quite some significant benefits, both uh, socioeconomic and environmental benefits. So. Uh, in this sense, I mean, these insects are used to upcycle up food waste. So we all have food waste. You can imagine uh, waste from your kitchen, kitchen scraps, whatever you leave on your plate. So all these are organic waste. So and all this waste can be recycled by the insect and in a very short time. So it's about 12 to 14 days. And the, the larvae of these black soldier flies will feed on the waste and then the leftovers will be manure, organic manure, which is grass. And then this grass we use for plants and then the insect, the larvae are fed to the chicken and the chicken really love them. Yeah, so these are uh, they feed to the chicken as an organic feed and it uh, is now a replacement for fish meal, which is uh, not sustainable way of getting uh, feed, so due to the issue of competition with human beings. Explain to us the entire cycle of the production of the black soldier fly. These black soldier flies uh, have, like any other insect, they have uh, four different life stages, which is the egg, the larvae, the pupa, and the adult. So at Ololo we have uh, the adults we have the, all the stages, so we keep, they, are, they have a lifespan of about 38 days and uh, the most significant stage is the larval stage where they just, they are just feeding on waste and turning them into this highly nutritious product and this, in this stage is usually between 12 to 14 days, so and then they normally take about three days to hatch, so from egg you get three days they will hatch into larvae and the larvae will immediately start feeding on waste. So that will take an, about 12 days as we mentioned. And then from there they will have another 14 days to turn into pupa and then they will emerge into flies. They will have another 8 days in their, in their adult stage where they are flies and they are purposely here, they are not feeding anymore since they have enough feed during their larval stage. So from there they will just uh, once they are flies, the, the, their job is to just mate and lay eggs. So you will see in our love nest, we have, uh, we call it a love nest because the purpose is just mate and lay eggs. And then we collect, we collect the eggs every two days. Then that's what we take to the next stage. We just keep, after incubation, then they just turn into flies, into, into larvae and keep feeding on the waste. Yeah, so in their, in their fly stage here in, in the love nest, they will, you only supply them with water and an attractant because they only lay eggs where they're sure the young ones will go and feed on the waste. Yeah, so you provide an attractant, should be a bit smelly. So yeah, you need to prepare it for, just close it in a tight container for about five days and a bit wet so it will be smelly enough to attract the insect to lay eggs.